Most of my memories as a little girl are in a volleyball gym. My neighbor, Betsy, I wanted to be just like her. So she played volleyball, I wanted to play volleyball. I was a terrible drawer, but ended up drawing a picture of myself and I had a USA jersey on and shockingly enough, it was number seven. We single filed into the gym and the first step that I took, I just had these crazy chills. It was a really emotional moment for me. What do you want volleyball to do for you? Where do you want this path to take you? I want to be on the USA Olympic team. I want to play in the Olympics one day. Surreal is the word that I have to use because it's something that I never have experienced before. We are committed. We are uplifting. We are strong. We are authentic. On the field. In the classroom. In the community. It's not just something we do. It's how we live. It's our work. Always pushing one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights. It's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane, and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. the aftermath of a homecoming rally. A final defensive stand that turned the tide of the conference race. An alma mater sung arm in arm after FIU scored 11 in the fourth quarter to squeak out a 24-21 victory. Those late red zone stands becoming a hallmark of the Butch Davis era here at FIU. A terrific finish to a homecoming week at FIU. Glad to have you once again on Facebook Live. It's Panther Talk Live at the Graham Center with Butch Davis. I'm AJ Ricketts. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Piece of cake. Uh, a fourth all quarter the time. rally. Yeah. So you had a lot of similarities to last season's game, a backup quarterback. The rushing game was trying to get, get going with some big passing numbers this year from James yeah. Morgan. But first, just the comeback, the grit of your team in that game. Yeah, I tell you what, AJ, there's, you know, sometimes during the course of the season, there's games that you're really, they're hallmark games, they're benchmark games, and they're also games that the coaching staff is very proud. And I'm going to tell you, our kids spilt their guts that entire ball game. It was a long 60-minute fight. You know, there was times we weren't playing as good as you'd like to, not taking advantage of some of the opportunities, but our kids never, ever doubted themselves. They believed in themselves the entire night, and they kept, you know, they just kept competing, compete all time long. And then, obviously, you get in the fourth quarter, score 11 points, some really magical plays. Obviously, uh, uh, Maurice Alexander on the two-point conversion was really good. James Morgan had a great night. I mean, 311 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, we didn't turn the ball over, so, you know, there was – just a lot of really, really good things happened Saturday night. And we'll talk all about what led up to that last play, but let's start with that last play yeah. there. The Olin Cushion interception uh. flying out of the out at, uh, up at the safety position, diving parallel to the ground to make that grab. You know, Kenny Kelly said, you know, Olin's a guy, you know, he's been questioned his entire life, his size, his physicality. Yep. You know, at his freshman year, he only had six tackles. Yeah. The UMass game alone, he had nine. This game, he had eight in his second career interceptions. What have yeah. you seen out of Olin since you came here, and he's really growing into a valuable contributor? You know, A.J., one of the things, and obviously, and, and I say this to the team, and I've said it in front of, uh, you know, of, of Olin all the time, there may not be a player on our entire football team that has changed 180 degrees about everything that he does. His passion for working out in the offseason, his leadership in the locker room, his practice habits, and then obviously then it transforms into the way in which he plays. Because last year it was a minor, minor role. But he just made a complete devotion to I'm going to be the best player that I can possibly be. And he got voted as a team captain. Obviously you said eight tackles. He had eight unassisted tackles. He had four four assisted tackles, so 12 tackles, and then come up with the play of the game, making the interception at the end of the game. And you can't say enough about him. And, and the way in which he made the play, A.J., you know, the disguise aspect of it, it looked like he was hanging on the other side 
immediately speed as soon as the ball got snapped, got to the middle of the field, got to where he was supposed to be, yeah. watched the ball come out of the quarterback's arms, and then just made a great play. Well, he only played in three games last season. He mentioned his minor yeah. role. He's playing a major role this season. And he said, he was talking after the game, he said O'Hara was staring that receiver down the entire time. Yeah. And he stayed just enough in touch with it so he could dive and make that play. He has a great IQ. And what were you expecting yeah. in those final sequences? Because it was a fourth and ten. Fourth and 12, they made that fourth down conversion. Yeah, All of a sudden, they're yeah. in the red zone, and you wonder if they're going to take a shot or just play for overtime. Yeah. What were you expecting? Well, clearly, there? the fourth and 10, the game should have been over there. I mean, yeah. that's the that's the opportunity that you don't give up a play on fourth down and 10. You you, de, you defend the sticks in the passing game, make sure they got to dump it off, you rally, you tackle, and the game's over. Obviously, they convert, and then you assume that, hey, look, they're going to probably at some point take a shot in the end zone, whether it's first and 10 yeah. and take that shot and then maybe run it a little bit, get the ball in the middle of the field and eventually on fourth down, uh, take advantage of maybe kicking a field goal to send it to overtime. They didn't get that opportunity, but they did do it on third down. And that's the one that Olin obviously intercepted. And, uh, you know, that's one of those things as a coach, you're going back and you're wondering, ah, should we have ever done that? Should we have just run it on third down, kick it, take it into overtime and see if you can win the game then? Well, the only reason Middle Tennessee was even taking a shot towards the end zone was because they didn't have to play for a field goal. They were down three and not just one because right. of that terrific two-point conversion. The former quarterback <laughs> slinging it around once yeah. again, showing that I, I still got it a little bit, the two-point conversion. Yeah. A, a, a terrific play, but Middle Tennessee read it well. James Morgan they on did. the delay. And so Maurice had to improvise a little bit, and he found Tony in the back of the end zone. That's yeah, a play. you know, and I, and I think that obviously his background of being a quarterback, one, the throw that he made to Tony Gator. Tony did a great job of uncovering in the end zone because originally he was covered and he slid away, got, opened himself up, and then Maurice had the poise. I mean, if you're a guy that's never played quarterback, you may just tuck it and try to run and get into the end zone. All of a sudden you get tackled at the two, and we don't make the two-point yeah. conversion. So an, an awful lot of, you know, just – poise and football intelligence on Maurice's part. Ed and Sage defensively led the team in tackles. It's the second time Ed Freeman has led FIU in tackles. He had 10. Sage was right behind him with yeah. nine. It seems like a rarity. He doesn't accumulate near 20 tackles, <laughs> Sage Lewis. But but those guys were, were flying all around the field. Last season, the defense gave up 37 points. Yeah. This year, 21. And, and O'Hara had his moments, but Ed and Sage, representative yeah. of the defense, flying all around the field. Yeah, you know, once their quarterback got hurt, they kind of changed – all the computer things said this is what they do down and distance personnel groupings yeah. and places on the field. Now all of a sudden they got a new quarterback and it's trying to get a read on how are they going to try to play the game. They tried to run a lot of quarterback powers, quarterback counters, quarterback sweeps, and then they really tried to break outside the pocket. They had gotten sacked an awful lot the previous week and we actually got to the quarterback, uh, the starting quarterback early and that's what knocked him out of the game. So I, I think they felt like we can't be a three-step, five-step step in the middle of the pocket type of a of a passing attack we need to make sure and so they started doing a lot of sprint outs and they got on the perimeter they were cutting the defensive ends keeping the edge you know from getting in the quarterback's face yeah. and that helped keep the drives alive well when O'Hara came in, and it was tough to see Brent Stock still go down because uh, he's just a terrific competitor. And a great and kid. Yeah. You know, A.J. and his dad, the head coach there, Rick, is a, is really one of the fine coaches sure in college is. football and a great person. And you hated to see his son get injured, you know. Yeah, he was injured last year. That's a yep. redshirt. Hopefully Brent uh, has a great redshirt season moving forward. But when O'Hara came in, you know, he led a long touchdown drive. Yeah. I think it was an eight-minute touchdown drive. Yeah, like 21 forever. plays. <laughs> yeah. I thought he didn't have the, uh, the ball in forever, it felt like. And then yeah. he led another one soon after that. What adjustments did you – yeah. Make ha defensively, uh, you said a lot of powers, sure. a lot of a lot of times behind Tavares Thomas. What adjustments did you make to try to slow him well, down? Well, some were adjustments, and some was just trying to be smarter. I mean, yeah. one of the touchdowns, obviously, we give up you know, that we should have never scored a touchdown. We get a, a rough in the quarterback on a scramble out of bounds, right. and he throws the ball, and and we bat the ball down, and we hit the quarterback late instead of it bringing up a fourth down. And now they got to try a 42-yard field goal. Now they drive down and score. But being smarter, third downs, you know. We, we didn't play third down as good as we really needed to. I, I, I know that their their completion was like eight out of 14 or 15 or 16 on third down conversions, and that's not good enough. you got to win that. Offensively, we did a great job. James was 11 out of 18, yeah. and uh, he had a great day, and that uh, obviously is how we ended up scoring points. But we got to play better on third down. we got to keep the quarterback in the pocket. That was one of, one of our goals was just to make sure that you make him play quarterback and don't let him get out and scramble. The two quarterbacks together, A.J., 
combined with the quarterback's rushing yeah. was 140 yards. That can't happen. Sure. That's got to go away. You cannot let the quarterback be the leading rusher. We don't want to give up a 100-yard rushing to any one individual, whether it's a running back and certainly not a quarterback. Yeah, that eight-minute drive, I think they had four or five third yeah. conversions. Absolutely yep. a point of emphasis moving forward. All right, James Morgan, uh, another sensational game for the transfer from Bowling Green. It's the second time in his career he's thrown for 300-plus yards in back-to-back -back games. The stat line this week, 27 for 36, yep. 311 yards, two touchdown passes at noon today is going to be named the Davy O'Brien Great Eight List, also a star of the week from the yeah. Manning Award. He and, he and he took care of the football. Doesn't he have does. a turnover the past two weeks. He's really getting into a good rhythm. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, quarterbacks, you know, their performance is directly tied to it starts with the protection and with the offensive line, the tight ends, the backs that keep the pocket clean, uh, and then the playmakers, the guys that go out there, you know, getting Bryce Singleton back. He comes back, he gets eight catches for 81 yards. Then you got – and then C.J. Wharton, who is – become one of those unbelievably really def, you know great dependable guys he ends up having over 100 yards receiving in one touchdown Austin Maloney I mean there's a lot of guys that are playing roles Shamar Thornton that's the first time he comes back I mean he and Bryce first Singleton a touchdown. they were the, they, yeah they were our two starting wide receivers the last five games of the season and they haven't played until this year basically and so getting those guys back gives James more weapons and uh, and and his ability to spread the ball around get to certain guys and those guys making plays for him we come back after the break we'll talk more about Bryce Singleton's return Jose Borgales and the impact special teams yep. made and we'll do a little bit of film study the pass protection he noted we'll look at a specific play and how that helped James Morgan throughout the course of that 24-21 homecoming victory we'll be right back on Panther Talk Live with Butch Davis stay with us Most of my memories as a little girl are in a volleyball gym. My neighbor, Betsy, I wanted to be just like her. So she played volleyball, I wanted to play volleyball. I was a terrible drawer, but ended up drawing a picture of myself and I had a USA jersey on and shockingly enough, it was number seven. We single filed into the gym and the first step that I took, I just had these crazy chills. It was a really emotional moment for me. What do you want volleyball to do for you? Where do you want this path to take you? I want to be on the USA Olympic team. I want to play in the Olympics one day. Surreal is the word that I have to use because it's something that I never have experienced before. We are committed. We are uplifting. We are strong. We are authentic on the field, in the classroom, in the community. It's not just something we do. It's how we live. It's our way. Always pushing one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights. It's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. on the sideline as your team <laughs> tries to wrap up a homecoming victory. The atmosphere electric in the fourth quarter as FIU rallies for a 24-21 victory. And uh, a rumor on the street is that Butch Davis had some similar dance moves in the locker yeah. room after the game. <laughs> I did. <laughs> somewhere there exists footage of this. We'll have to track it down somewhere. <laughs> it's locked. It's locked in a safe somewhere. <laughs> we got Maurice Alexander and Olin Cushing, the two plays big at the end of the game, and I, we had a little dance off in the middle of the locker room. It was hilarious. Like you said you they can dance. After that. I got no ability. None <laughs> it's whatsoever. It's all about the effort. That's, That's all that right. matters. That's all that matters. All right, we're talking about pass protection. How, James Morgan, it felt like he had three or four seconds to sit in the pocket 
Houston yeah. and find receivers all throughout the night. Let's bring up a specific play here in the fourth quarter. Watch Sean Darius Phillips. Coach, he's yep. going to slide over. They have four down linemen, a safety and a linebacker blitz, and he picks it up well. Boy, that's a great job because one of the things was a challenge for our team we talked about on the night before and all week long was the ability to pick up all of their blitzers. And here, obviously, keeping the pocket clean where James can step up in the pocket, find the open wide receiver. Here it's Austin Maloney. He uncovers in the middle of the field, and this was a third down conversion. Yeah. This was a big play. We were backed up. You don't want to punt, give them the ball, you know, in good field position, and it kept the drive alive. Sean Darius not only laid a block, he took he his – took him out of the picture. Of the <laughs> yeah, exactly. A uh, terrific block. And, and, and we talked about it last week on Panda Talk, how essential identifying schemes, blitzes, yeah. who's picking up who would be over the course of this game. And in comparison to last year, I guess a 180 in terms of the efficiency, guys picking yeah. up blocks and, and giving Morgan well, some Well, Alan Mogridge are, and Tim Harris, offensive uh, running back coach, yeah. and, uh, and, and Alan obviously coaches the offensive line, they work hand in hand because it does. It takes the offensive line in the backs, either whether or not it's chipping your way out on a release or helping on blitz pickup, and, and then the quarterback in the center identifying who the rushers potentially are, making sure that the slide or the pickup is the same the way that you want it to go. But I, I can't tell you how critically important that that is, that they work together. And it was a big challenge because going into this game, this is probably the team that has showed the most variety of different looks. And then guys that look like they're blitzing drop into coverage. Guys that look like they're covering coming off the edges. And uh, you better be on the same page. And obviously yeah. our guys did a great job. And Morgan took advantage of that. Now special teams play another huge strength all season. That was epitomized in this game. Jose Borgales coming into yeah. the game was three for four on the season. Now our team as a whole in the bottom third of conference play in terms of field goal attempts to the point where it was hilarious I was on Twitter, and his mom said, I want more field goals. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want like, more touchdowns. Well, I understand that. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, we want touchdowns. But yeah. in this game, three for four on yeah. field goals, a program record yeah. from, from 53, and it obviously – made a huge yeah. difference. He was ready for his moment. Yeah, he really was. And obviously, we have so much faith and confidence in him that I, I we really believe that the if it's a 55-yard kick, unless there's a, a horrible wind into it, we feel like that he's got every bit of an opportunity to make it. And making the 53-yard for the school record, uh, the one that he did miss, I mean, it was just a slight little bit of the wind moving in and a little bit of a pull and hits the upright or he'd had a 4 for 4 night. But um, he's one of the best kickers that I've ever been around. He's got great pull Boys. He got great leg strength. I mean, he literally can kick it and explode the ball through the uprights. Well, I asked him earlier in the week, I said, what's the longest, in, whether in practice or a game, you've ever hit a field goal? He said 65. Yeah. 65. And yeah. when you saw that 53 yard to go through, you were, I was thinking, yeah, oh, that would have been good for yeah. 65. No <laughs> doubt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a terrific game for Borgalis. The three mm -hmm. field goals matches what he had the entire season heading into this game. And another guy that we saw excel. Bryce Singleton, and he missed a couple games returning from an injury. He had four catches in the Old Dominion game. You saw what an impact he yep. made. And then this game, eight catches. All of last season, he had 17. Right. So in one game, nearly 50% of the right. receptions of last year and 81 yards, that was more than a third of the yeah. yardage he had last season. He's made an impact. Yeah, and you know what, A.J., it's good getting him back because obviously having the, a little bit of experience and the playing time that he got last year, he had a great offseason. He had a great summer. You know, training camp was good. Unfortunately, gets the injury and gets the setback. Maybe we rushed him slightly a little bit. I mean, he was so chomping at the bits yeah. to come back early against the ODU and everything. And then, you know, he needed to let the, the injury kind of continue to heal up and get well. Came back and, uh, you know, his experience, he's strong, he's physical. He does a great job with the ball. When he catches the ball, he's one of those guys, I mean, if you remember, he was one of our kickoff returners last year, and he can split tacklers, and so it's great having him back. Coach, you guys really utilize screen plays well in yep. this week's game. But tunnel screens, bubble screens, you saw just there. Bryce Singleton had a big gain on, on some of those. That, that was a really efficient part of the offensive yeah, game plan. Yeah, I mean, obviously one of the things when you're, you know, how do you deal with blitz teams? I mean, if they're going to bring a lot of people, you know, they're going to give you some opportunities to maybe throw some screens because they don't have that many people down the field in coverage. So it was good and part of the game plan, and we executed it really well. As Adam Amin said last year on ESPN, the, the screen against the blitz, it's the perfect play. Price Singleton utilized that really yep. well. And a couple of big gains, eight catches for 81 yards for the sophomore from South Carolina. All right, when we come back, we asked you if you had any questions on Twitter. A couple of you did. We'll get to those, talk about Barstool and our sorts of fun stuff on our final <laughs> segment. We have to talk live with Butch Davis. Davis.
Most of my memories as a little girl are in a volleyball gym. My neighbor, Betsy, I wanted to be just like her. So she played volleyball, I wanted to play volleyball. I was a terrible drawer, but ended up drawing a picture of myself and I had a USA jersey on and shockingly enough, it was number seven. We single filed into the gym and the first step that I took, I just had these crazy chills. It was a really emotional moment for me. What do you want volleyball to do for you? Where do you want this path to take you? I want to be on the USA Olympic team. I want to play in the Olympics one day. Surreal is the word that I have to use because it's something that I never have experienced before. We are committed. We are uplifting. We are strong. We are authentic. On the field. In the classroom in the community. It's not just something we do. It's how we live. It's our work. Always pushing one another. Working towards the same vision. Stronger together. This is the CUSA way. We're a university founded on the side of an airport, reaching new heights. It's in our DNA. And since then, we've dedicated ourselves to solving the big problems facing our community and the world. We believe that crazy startup idea isn't so crazy, that families without health care shouldn't have to go it alone. We believe we can be better prepared for the next hurricane and that our coral reefs can be saved. And that's because, above all else, we believe in you. Taking a look on the Modesto Bay campus of FIU. Another beautiful day in South Florida. It's back to summertime weather. We had about four days of fall weather in the 80, 85s. Now back to 90 plus. <laughs> but we love it down here. That's just what we expect day in and day out. AJ Ricketts alongside Butch Davis. Panther Talk Live at the Graham Center. Thanks for joining us today. All right, we went to Twitter. Asked if you had any questions. Had a couple people chime in. First question is very important. Besides wedding day and the birth of your child, was winning Pardon My Takes Football Guy of the Week the best day of your life, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, obviously, you know, Caleb Presley came in from Barstool and did the little comedian thing where he went in the weight room and yeah. did stuff with us. And then, obviously, then they called back this week and shock come out of the world that they wanted to talk about it. But it was it was interesting and it was fun. Well, they asked Butch, you know, do you have any, any turnover prompts for your defense? And he <laughs> said if, if the defense gets a turnover, they get to keep their scholarship. <laughs> no, I, I just said, I said all, all of ingest, our players, all ingest, if you yeah. play good yet, yeah. no, you get to keep their scholarship. That's that, that's the prop we use. Football guy. You yeah. got to love that. Next Twitter question here, our second Twitter question, also very important. Coach, do you know where you can get the best croquetta in Miami? You've spent plenty of time in South Florida. Do you have a go-to spot oh, for the, the best of Cuban cuisine? Oh, man. The, the, the Vegas Cuban food restaurants in Doral, both right. of those have got unbelievably great Cuban food. Vegas Cuban food restaurants yep. in Doral. In Doral. Okay. All They're right. really well, good. We just shouted you all out, so yep. we expect a sponsorship now. Yeah. <laughs> Free food for the coaches. Yeah, yeah there that's you go. right. The broadcast, give me some of those croquetta, too, as well. All right, let's preview – Rice moving forward. It's been a tough season for the Owls. One and six overall, 0 and three in conference play. They did play Houston tough yep. earlier this year. The last two games, the offense has struggled just to combine two po uh, three points against UTSA and UAB. Yep. They have a new head coach, Mike Bluegrim, spent seven years with Stanford. Uh, played. I uh, was a grad assistant under Bobby Bowden, formerly mm -hmm. at, at Florida State. You just go back to last year against Rice. It was the tough game, but this oh. season's Rice team struggling. What have you seen on film in the early impressions well, so far? Well, the thing that I think that's really kind of hurt them is obviously they've turned the ball over and they've had a little bit of issues of, of you know, difference with the quarterback. When you turn the film on, if you don't look at the, at the scoreboard, they are playing lights out from an effort standpoint. Their defense flies to the football. Their offense, they are as multiple of an offense as anybody we will see this entire year. You turn it on, and I actually said – you know, I want to see if they're running all of Stanford's offense. You know, multiple tight ends, pound you, blood of your nose, yeah. have a fullback in the game. And the first thing I see is they're in 10 personnel. They're spreading the field, and they're winging the ball all over. But then as you work your way back, here's what they've done is, is that every single game that they've played this year, they've, had, they've, they've got 14 different personnel groupings. They'll put, they'll put seven or eight offensive linemen in the game at one time, and they'll give you some of the Stanford offense. They'll give you some of the gun run type of things. You're going to have to have an awful lot of packages prepared to play in this game. Well, 
Bloomgren trying to bring his yep. intellectual brutality model yep. from Stanford to Rice, and they know it's going to take a, a little bit of time, but Rice, the program, it's getting facility upgrades as well. Sure. He's trying to bring that type of offense uh, to Houston moving forward. But you go back to last year's matchup when you talk about FIU mm -hmm. and Rice, and that was the third game of the season. It was following that, that narrow win against Alcorn State. Sure. The team spent a week, week and a half in Birmingham to, to eke out a win against Alcorn State. Then you go to Rice in yep. the first conference game, and Again, a low-scoring affair, and mm -hmm. defense is making plays, a couple of field goals from Borgallis, but that was the first time that defense made a red zone yeah. stand, yeah. Uh, as that theme has obviously continued. But, but that was a very dramatic game, yeah. and the team really came through, and they really learned from you that. Know, two things jump out from that game a year ago, A.J. Obviously, at the end of the second quarter, we had a great drive. We put in the score was 7-7 seven to or seven to seven at the time. We drive down, and Jose kicks a field goal to let us score points going into the halftime. Then you come back, and the other part of it that you already talked about was the four plays from the 10-yard line when they're throwing the ball in the end zone trying to score to win the game yeah. and getting a goal line stand. Those are things that, you know, obviously you're building your own history when with a football team. And every game that you play, helps you understand how critically important field position is, opportunities, drives, you know, playing red zone defense, goal line defense, and obviously the, uh, the you know, what we did at the end of that game, I think that that came back to help us in other games later on in the season. I think it was one of those games that really helps you create an identity sure. last season yep. and making new stories with this yep. program. Farrell McKeever had the only touchdown in that game now in the practice squad, I think with the Browns at this point in the game. All right, this weekend against Rice at home, 7.30 p.m. ESPN Plus, 6.10 WI. IOD. We're going to have, uh, if you take a look at, at the football here, yeah. pink, pink lettering on the football, on the helmets as well. And if you go to the bookstore, you can yeah. get this, right? What's, Absolutely. What yeah, fight cancer. Breast cancer week, uh, the whole month of October, yep. obviously, and AJ, and this is huge. It's it's critical. Hopefully everybody that comes to the game, they'll have some kind of a pink ribbon yeah. or pink blouse or shirt. They're there at the bookstore. Let's paint the cage pink this yeah. week. It should be a great time. All right, Coach, final thing, uh, as we always chat about to finish off the show, keys of, keys of emphasis for the team this week. Yeah, well, one of them is, is obviously is – defensively we've got to be prepared for all the multiple looks and and sometimes it is like disguise they want to get you looking at all the different receivers and things like that but they still want to punch you in the nose and they want to run the ball whether it's in whether it's with four wide receivers or whether it's with seven or eight offensive linemen that's their heart and soul they want from an offensive perspective from a defensive perspective they are lights out they want to slant they want to stunt they're a little bit like what we saw last week with middle tennessee and that they want to try to blitz come off the edge so we've got to be prepared in all three phases should be a great game hopefully yep. celebrating another victory and maybe some more post-game dancing after this <laughs> upcoming week we'll see about that a matchup against rice this weekend coach appreciate the time as always thank you Thanks, AJ. all great. right that's been panther talk live with butch davis fiu and rice this weekend let's paint the cage pink thanks for joining us on facebook live i'm aj rickens we'll see you this weekend